I'm Rainer Sauber. I'm one of four health scientists from the IPCC team who put this together for you. It is a brief for policymakers of national, local or international levels. The argument we want to put forward to you is that health is more than just one of many other sectors like agriculture, forestry and so forth. But health is useful to be an argument, a leverage in otherwise conflict, conflictual and interest guided debates. And we do this in four presentations according to four key arguments, which I will just quickly go through. The first argument, everybody cares about health. Health is a key motivator, both for our personal individual behavior, after all, we all have to change our lifestyles to be more climate friendly, but also negotiators. Everybody cares about health and their constituency. So it is an argument that drives change, that generates energy to do something about climate change. The second argument is what is good for the climate is good for health. That's true in most cases. Let me give you one example. Indoor air pollution kills 4 million people a year, mostly women and children. Outdoor air pollution kills 3 million. This is huge, a huge human loss to one environmental problem. If we decarbonize our energy system, much of this will go away. So by doing something for the climate, we also do something for our health. And that is a very positive argument to follow, rather than the doom and gloom scenarios that sometimes are, are put forward. So we make our planet not only a climate-friendly planet, but also a healthy planet. The third argument is more of a warning nature. There are limits to adaptation. And with limits, I mean health limits from our physiology, from the way our body works. This is true certainly for our limits of adapting to a warmer world, to higher temperatures, but it's also true for our coping with other diseases that will be increased due to climate change. The fourth argument is, if you like, a health-based economic argument. We showed that if temperature rises, then there are, there's a physiological law that your work output, your work effort, decreases. And this is very bad for tropical and subtropical countries, which are emerging as uh, economic development uh, ensues, because they will suffer from serious setbacks, not only in harvest work, but also in factory work, because many people work in unair conditioned factories. So here we have a health-based economic argument. Finally, health is, if you like, a, a last indicator of success, not only a motivator, but also an indicator. Because many things conjure for a child to be malnourished, climate-related factors or not climate-related factors. But the climate-related factors are adding up to a larger burden on this child. Agricultural yields, infectious disease increases, the water uh, changes, the water cycle is changed. So a malnourished child is a victim of many untoward factors, among others, climate sectors. Let's look at climate change from a health perspective. A healthy planet is a climate-friendly planet, and a climate-friendly planet is a healthy planet. This positive message should be introduced and used as leverage in the debate and in the negotiations on climate change. Stay tuned. Uh, the effort or the investment on your part is roughly half a day if you want to take in not only the presentations but also the, the slides and the facts and the numbers that come with it. It's not much. It's maybe an intercontinental flight for the busy decision makers if you carbon offset the flight, of course, or half a day on a weekend for uh, those of you who uh, look through this at home. Thank you very much.